Welcome to the R video tutorial on random number generation part one. Actually, maybe part two. Who knows? This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, last time we talked about the idea of random number generation in terms of the concepts and we didn't actually do anything in R. So this time we want to start using R to generate random numbers and for this we're really going to have to know how to look at histograms in order to classify or describe the distributions that we're going to get. So it's quite easy to do this inside of R because they're already built in lots and lots of distributions. So what we'll do is explore a few of them in this video and then the next video we'll start chaining them together. Okay, so first thing we need to do is not read in any data files because we're going to use random number generation to generate our data. Okay, so let's start off with the uniform distribution. It's uh, one of the basic ones that we need to work with if we were going to do the inverse CDF approach. So it's pretty easy to do, so I'm going to call this U1, and it's RUNIF for uniform, you're going to put in the number that you want. So here I want 100 of them. I'm going to be between 0 and 1. So let's put this down here in our comments, our unif, and then put, um, let's see, the pound sign, I guess, uh, of samples, and then the lower limit, and the upper limit. Now, you can put in others than 0 and 1, but right now we're just going to run this. We're going to get 100 of them, and then we're going to look at a histogram. So when I run them, uh, this is what I end up with is nothing. I end up with over here in the environment the vector of the numbers that we want to have uh, or the random deviates. So let's look at U1 here, and you can see all the numbers that it generated, and notice they're all decimals between 0 and 1. Okay, so we can uh, make this larger if we wanted to. We could do U2 is R unif, and we could do, let's say, 2,000 of them. And I'm going to make this one go between minus 5 and 10. And we're going to do a second thing with this, which is do a histogram of this. Uh, we're familiar with how to do histograms, so why not run a histogram so we can get a picture of this thing instead of just looking at the values by themselves. So I'm going to do the color here is blue. Or how about light blue? And I'm going to also put the X label equal to X and main equal to uh, uniform. And we'll see what this thing looks like. Okay, so let's give this a run. And notice we end up with something that's pretty flat across here. There are some little bumps, and that's due to random deviations. But it's pretty uniform across here. It goes between minus 5 and and 10, which is exactly what we specified as our bounds. So it's always going to put something uniform between minus 5 and 10, or whatever your lower bound is and whatever your upper bound is. Uh, that's what the uniform does, and it tries to be as flat as possible. If you really want to get it flat, crank up the number of samples. So let's go crazy and let's look at 20,000 samples and see if it looks any flatter. And notice it's a lot flatter than it was before, and we can even go crazier and put in 200,000 samples, run that, see what it looks like. Okay. And when I zoom in, I see that this thing is pretty flat, and that's due to the law of large numbers, but we'll not worry about that here. But notice it is actually uniform, it's just when we get lower samples, you're going to see more deviations. Okay, so let's move on to the next distribution. So this was our simple one. Let's move on to the normal distribution because that's the one most people see in a lower level stat class. So the normal distribution requires two parameters. So here we're going to do, uh, I'll call this N1. Uh, since they're normal, U was for uh, uniform. So R norm, I want to get 1,000 of these with a mean here. So we're going to have to have the mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1. So let's write that down here in the comment. So our norm, if I can type, as you can see, I usually can't. Put here number of samples. And then I'm going to put in mu, the mean. So I'll maybe write mean. And then the standard deviation. And that's what I need to put in here. And then I'm going to do a histogram of it. So let's do a histogram of N1. Let's make the color equal pink, just to be different. Uh, make our X label equal to X. 
and make the main equal to normal. And we'll give this a go and see what the picture looks like. And when I zoom in, this is what the picture looks like. It's relatively symmetric. Um, it's, at least in this picture, it's quite symmetric. And it seems to tail off. There doesn't seem to be any extreme values. Uh, it's centered right at where we said to center it, which was 5. And the standard deviation is actually 1. But here, if you said it, the spread would be between 0 and 9 because that's what we would see in, due to random sampling. Now, the fun thing is, is run this again and you'll get a different picture. So notice we get a different picture this time because every time we run this, we get a different set of random variables or random draws from this data set. So what we're getting is different random values, so the picture's going to look different. And we can run it one more time and see what we get this time. And sure enough, it's slightly different. But all of them are symmetric, about 5, which is our mean and does have a nice spread that goes here between 2 and 8. Okay, so um, sometimes people get frustrated by random numbers uh, because whenever you do it, you get a different answer each and every time. So what we might want to do is what's called set a seed. Okay, and when you set a seed, this will make sure that whatever you get is consistent every single time. So we'll set a seed and we'll do set dot seed and you can see it even pops up here uh, and our little help tip. So I'm going to do set.seed, and you put in a number, uh, any number you want. So I'm going to put in the number 3. Why 3? I don't know. Uh, feels like a th uh, 3 type of day at the moment. Okay, so when I set a seed, what I can do, and we're just going to play with this real simple, you'll see that the actual answers stay the same. So I'm going to just generate 5 of these uh, between 0 and 1. Okay, and then when I run this with the set seed, I get these answers. I get 0 0.16, 0 0.80, 0 0.38, 0.32, 0 0.60. Now, if I run this again, I should get exactly the same numbers. And if you look, sure enough, I get exactly the same numbers, which is what I was hoping to do. And that's what a seed does. It allows me to get the same numbers each and every time so that I have reproducibility if I'm trying to work with other people. Uh, some people don't like the fact that the numbers are going every which way all the time. However, if I don't set the seed before I run it, notice if I just run this part, I get a different number now because it's continuing on in sort of the long list of random numbers that it's going to generate from this seed. The default seed is to actually go look at the system clock on your computer so that it can get uh, a new seed every time, but that can actually cause problems as well if your machine is faster than your system clock, which I've seen in the past. But don't let's not worry about that here. So just know that we can set a seed, and setting a seed is quite common, and I probably will have you do that uh, in the video quizzes if you're taking the class uh, if you're not taking the class, you will probably see it in other people's code because they want you to be able to reproduce the same result. Okay, so this has been our first attempt at random number generation in R. In the next videos, we're going to just continue on the distributions that we can look at, and ultimately we're going to chain things together. All right, move on to the next video.